wins last season. And boy, the coaching staff tells us he has looked great in the preseason. And a great start as the Cougars win the tip. Nice to have you with us at ESPN for the first of our hopefully long season of Cougar basketball. Hofstra with a brand new coach. Open up in a man. Opening shot of the season belongs to the right baseline for Marcus Sasser. And that's exactly what Coach Sampson wanted to see out of his first possession. Yeah, so often we see the offense start inside. Reggie Chaney is really good at having the offense flow through him. Aaron Estrada wears number four for the pride. He'll be the main go-to guy in the starting five. Lots of different transfers. Nine, in fact, newcomers. Estrada tries to even the contest. Can't do so. Easy Ola, the offensive rebound. Now the Cougars will double team that ball when he gets to the post. Easy Ola had no idea. Boy, that was a travel. And Moore takes away with it. There's a newcomer for the Cougars and had turned right back. One on two. Not afraid. The follow through, yes. Darn and Stone Dubar with the steal. Missed the layup and an and one coming back for the Pride. As a Caleb Burgess comes in. Boy, for the pride, you're asking a bunch of guys that were single-digit scorers to add their scoring punch. Burgess, last year, averaging just eight points a game and five and a half rebounds. Estrada's the young man that you're seeing right now at the free throw line. Was the MAC Rookie of the Year and a two-time transfer. Yeah, and sitting on the bench surprised us. Jalen Ray, first team all conference last year, averaged 19 points per game. And we don't know what's going on, but... Speedy Claxton has him sitting over there beside him to start this game. Sasser on the second series for the Cougars. We're a minute gone by, even at three. In the low block, White faces a double team. Zone here by Hofstra. Almost a zone bust. NGIT, 1,800 points. He is a graduate transfer. And a tie up. Boy, Speedy Claxton Reed's got a lot of work ahead of him. Three starters. Two audience, I would suggest that perhaps he's best known as arguably the best player in Hofstra basketball history. Here's Burgess. Would like to change that. Shot clock under five. Estrada contested three. And we've got a foul inside. Uh, Easy Ola really doing work on the boards that time. The only blue shirt down there. To the quarter and a half. Look at all those white shirts for Eziola to get his hand on the ball. Ambaya, a 6'10 redshirt senior out of Atlanta. Here's Burgess. Gets a good screen from Eziola. Kick out right corner. Strata missing the three. Another offensive rebound. There's a putback opportunity on the third try. It drops. And I can tell you right now, you've been to Coach Sampson's practices. Rebounding is going to be a big thing that Coach Sampson will scream from the sideline. Yeah, you know he's really angry when he sits down and he's quiet. Sasser not afraid to dial up again. And the rebound picked up by Eziola. Look, Speedy Claxton's got to be thrilled with the way his team has started this game, especially on the boards. Almost a takeaway that time by oh, Edwards, good the move. Texas Tech product. But there's a drive in the left, left side of the lane for Zach Cooks. 1,800 points out of an NJIT. And the Hofstra Pride have a lead of 7-3. to three. Second highest score in NJIT's history, Zach Cooks. We've got some newcomers to talk about on the Cougars side as well. But really, Fabian White wants to go against three blue shirts, and he's going to come up short. Put back on the second try. And one. Boy, Fabian White playing it's on the floor for the Cougars. White to finish off the three-point play and missed it badly. The Cougars had an exhibition game on Saturday, and Fabian was really, really good. 17 points and 17 rebounds in also, that game. Also a graduate of the University of Houston. Dialing up from deep is Eziola from three. I think they won't mind him taking that shot throughout the course of the night. Got to think that's not what Speedy Flaxton is looking for. The Texas Tech transfer, Kyler Edwards missing on his try. Quickly, boy, they're not, their pace is strong. Hofstra, bounce pass, Eziola to the window, no. Cougars have numbers if they want it. Sasser on the push. Catch, shoot, no. Shed, back comes Hofstra, two on one, not afraid to attack the basket, coming up short. Another offensive rebound, and they'll look to reset. Open three. Missed that time by Dubar. Another rebound of the Cougars. Hoster. Tyler Edwards wearing number 11, but we will keep an eye on him throughout the course of the oh, night. Oh, good pass. And there's a better pass as Cheney dumps it down. 
Kareem, there's satisfaction for Marcus Sanders when he gets that great pass, and you can tell it's almost as much of enjoyment of scoring a basket. Uh, and that's a new role for him. He's going to play more and more point guard, and talks about he worked on it a lot this offseason. Matt, I can't believe the rebound right now. Yeah, Ten to four, and, and uh, the Hofstra Pride have come out, and they are physically stepping up to match this challenge. Most deliberate half court set they've run all night here. Ooh, three a little seconds. hesitation, too. Estrada misses from the free throw line. Another rebound to White, and another turnover. This time in the hands of Dubar. Looks like they're a little winded here. Yeah, they do. Really, really sloppy start in this game. Burgess at midcourt. Eziola sets the screen. No pick and roll that time. A little more deliberate for Hoster last year. Trips down the floor. Layup left side on the way and through over Fabian White for the deuce. And Hofstra back up 9-7. Yeah, Reggie Chaney just about got Kyler Edwards clocked. I mean, got him killed. Did not step up and call out the screen. And, man, Eziola just absolutely walloped Kyler Edwards. Right corner for a three. Shot off the mark for White, who will knock down occasional three. There's the scrum that you see in a lot of Cougar practices. And we're going to get a foul in backcourt and a call against Jamal Shedd. And with that, we get ourselves a timeout. The pride. Offensive rebounds in the first six minutes of this game. So the Hofstra pride didn't really even know their lineup until earlier this afternoon. They have got ten players fighting for those five spots. And really, the main guy will be the man holding the basketball and Aaron Estrada. As I mentioned, uh, formerly with St. Peter's where he was a Mac player of the year. Still no Jalen Ray. Jalen Ray will talk more about. I mean, you talk about all sorts of career numbers on that campus. Shot clock under 10. Cooks around the corner. Left side, a three ball coming up. Elmar Silvario with a miss. He is a transfer from Rhode Island, and he's on the floor for the first time. Love the Sasserno look. Down the lane. Speaking of transfer, Texas Tech product Kyler Edwards missing a layup try. A little more burst of energy off the left elbow jumper on the way good for Silvario fresh off the bench 13 games a year ago average five points for the pride pride playing really fast they're getting back into their sets early train early offense their transition sets really effective to start this game involved another post player second try offensive rebound off the miss then a comeback the other way for the Cougars. That was the shot taken by Josh Carlton and a three-pointer coming right back for the Hofstra Pride as we've called Zach Co Cook's name a lot here in this first half. Boy, that was just feeling it right right now. The Pride on a 7-0 run. Edwards and Sasser running the U of H backcourt. Shed the first of two subs. A poke and it stays on the Cougars sideline. So Barrio been very active here in the 60 seconds he's been on the floor. Yeah, a lot of hand checking. That is again a point of emphasis this year for the officials. And boy, you wouldn't know it from that possession. Really allowing a lot of contact. There's Tajay Moore, Cal State Bakersfield, a graduate, playing a final year, averaged eight points and three rebounds in his time at Cal State Bakersfield. Shot clock at five. I don't think they know it. No. And they're going to get a call. Sasser tried it from. Well beyond the three-point arc, and that's going to go. Have clock awareness. He's got to look up. He's got to see it. Gave it to Josh Carlton. Josh had no idea what the clock was. Kicked it out to Juwan. He had no idea where the clock was. Kayvon Kramer on the floor for the Pride, an all-rookie player from a year ago. He is really athletic. I mean, he is some kind of explosive. Here's Cook's going to dial up one more time and hit. Zach Cooks starting for Jalen Ray and has made a difference here as Hofstra's lead is now 10. Look, look, the Cougars may not have known a lot about Hofstra. They did know about Zach Cooks. And he was in the scouting report, and Kelvin Sam Cooks has been terrific, and he's feeling it. He's coming down in transition. Last possession, he came down a one on three, pulled the trigger, and buried it. And boy, the Cougars are going to have to make an adjustment on Cooks coming out of this timeout. Jaywan Roberts on the floor for the first time for the University of Houston. As the Cougars run a set, and we've got a hand check foul called against Cooks. So the transfer portal obviously works a lot in football. Uh, from Oregon, a transfer from Arkansas at Hofstra. Five Division I transfer athletes playing for the Hofstra Pride this season. Sasser with a two-hand pass. 
Always looking to on the no look. Nice spin. Shot at 10, 10 feet, good. That's Fabian White. That's his sweet spot. Yeah, the best possession for Houston on the offensive end. They were very deliberate. They ran their sets. They did not force the shot. A good look. Now they've got a lockdown on Cooks. That ended the 8 nothing run for the Pride. Cooks, very active, faces a double team. Gerard Simmons, a pen transfer in the lineup. Three-point try. That's not going to fall for Severio, who had one earlier on. Approaching nine minutes gone by here in this first half of play. Sasser to the window, looking for contact, and he got it. When you can't get in a flow, put your head down, try to get to the rim, and see if you can get to the free throw line. I think he jinxed him with his great free throw percentage. Preseason all-conference first team for Marcus. One out of two. Seven-point lead for the Pride. Cooks has taken his time, fighting through screens. Out left corner, they're not afraid to dial up for three, and another one coming from the hands of Aaron Estrada. Well, that, that speedy claxon has got to be thrilled with the way his team has started this game. And we have an offensive foul call on the pass off. The only thing I'm thinking about for Hofstra is, can you maintain this for 40 minutes? Is your... So a turnover for the... Cougars will have Hofstra with the lead and back up to 10 as we approach 10.45 remaining in the first half. Estrada will run the point this trip down the floor. Well, their wings are moving around. You got post players coming immediately. That's Simmons with the screen. Three-pointer coming up. That's strong. Sasser at the free throw line clears. Lob feed in low block. Got to take advantage of the size advantage the Cougars have here. Out of right corner kick out for Edwards. That's what he did in Lubbock, and they want to see it here in Houston, Texas. A career 42% three-point field goal shooter, Tyler Edwards. Actually shot better from beyond the arc than he did inside while at Texas Tech. Speaking of a three ball, another one coming up left corner. That's not going to fall. Came up short. Another offensive rebound. That's her sixth and a reset. Floater off the window and down. Basketball <laughs> cooks. He's, He's all over the floor here. Yeah, he is the real deal. Six offensive rebounds have been converted into seven second chance points for the Pride. Halfway done in the half. Errant pass saved. Edwards around the arc. Good. Sasser brings it back out. That's really good defense. Carlton. Biggest man on the floor setting the screens, leaving a man open, shaking his head as Marcus Sasser says, I'll be involved, I'll have to. He was looking at me, I said, come on, come on, Kramer's playing unbelievable defense on him, and Sasser said, uh, not, not so much. We've got a timeout in the backcourt here, boy. Nine minutes and 25 seconds remaining in this first half. The Pride at one point, at one point had a 10-point advantage, it's at seven with the basketball. Really good spacing down there on the offensive end for the Pride. He's the older back of the floor. Interesting to see what he and Carlton do down low. And out of bounds. That's two defensive players forcing to the sideline and more importantly forcing a Hofstra turnover. I really like Speedy Claxton's demeanor over there on the sideline. You know, mistake, he doesn't get frustrated. Right. He looked at his player. He said something. He didn't overreact. And a lot of that read is because he was an assistant coach for eight years. Sasser dialing up. He knew it wasn't going to go down, but here's the offensive rebound. And the putback with the right hand, not going to fall. Again, a third try of the chime for Josh Carlton. UConn X. Houston Cougar now, and it's a five-point game. A three-year starter for UConn in the exhibition game. He was good on Saturday, but he is going to really be a key to this team and the success that Houston's going to have this year. Good Cook's thinking about a deep three. They wouldn't take it this time. There's a contested three. That's not going to fall off the hands of Silvar. you got three guys that are just shooting anywhere from 20 feet right now for Hofstra. Let me tell you something. Tajay Moore just rotated, was outstanding on the defensive end. He closed out, took away a shot, and then recovered to his man and contested and forced a miss. Excellent effort by Moore. How about that 360 move for Carlton? And welcome to the University of Houston campus. A couple of baskets in the last two minutes. And the double-digit lead has been cut to three on a 9-2 Houston run. Strata facing lots of pressure by Tyler Edwards. Shot clock at 15. 
Garlandstone Dubar. Give and go to Dubar. Swatted. Second swat. Shot clock at six from 25. That's going to be another air ball. That was blocked by wow. Moore. He got a piece of that. I didn't think it hit the rim, but a reset. It did not hit the rim. And that's a freebie for the Hofstra Pride on the errant extra seconds as Aaron Estrada hits it from the baseline. Well, Tajay Moore is really, really active on the defensive end. This could, this could be a Marcus Sasser 40 minute night. You know what I'm thinking? There may be a lot of those nights. Moore into Carlton. Based on the baseline, we're going to push. Yeah, you just can't. When the post player starts making a move, you just cannot put your hands on him. They will call that two. distance that he covered and never gave up, gave up the open shot. Oh, that is outstanding. Sasser on in the inbounds. Catch. Shoot. Three ball. No good. Edwards. Loose ball. Back in the hands of Sasser. Marcus again a three ball around the rim and out. Lots of rebounds. This time a loose ball foul. Yeah, that's not a good call. Dubar had Fabian White boxed out, but he had his hands down, and Fabian the same thing as on the back, and you know, that's a tough call for Fabian White. And the Pride will be shooting free throws here for the final almost seven minutes remaining. And a stoppage in play here. Usually this is a clock issue of some sort of the shot clock. It has been uh, fixed. Randy Hyman, yeah, Chris just no, Chumley. There's no contact there at all. Yeah. And it was a good box out, but he's backing up. And you can go over somebody's back. You just can't go on their back. Around the arc. The main go-to guys have been Cook and Estrada. This is Estrada with a 360 move. Cut off. Dubar steps out of bounds. That's what you have to do when you make a comeback. Good deep hooks after the first five minutes of this game has done a really good job of taking away his clean looks at the basket. Sasser aggressive on both ends of the floor here in the first half. Not the way he envisioned his game. First one. Good pass. J1 Roberts. No. Ah, it did fall through after all. Roberts coming off the bench. One of three big men the Cougars will have in their rotation this year. More. Estrada into the low block, turning, spinning. Nice feed inside of the weak side, and that's a dunk. Put it in there for Darlingstone Dubar, the Iowa State transfer. In the first half, the Pride have 17 points off of offensive rebounds and points off turnovers. That's 17 out of their 26 points. And a five-point lead. Cheney on the handoff to Edwards. Good defensive switch. Hofstra not moving, moving quickly. Reach in. Foul will be called. That'll be on Kayvon Kramer. He's been under. I've given him a few chances to score down there in the paint. And if Kramer defends him, he's got a 25-pound advantage against his defender. 15 to shoot. No need to worry about his size there. An emphatic throwdown for Reggie Cheney. And that double-digit lead has been shaved to a one-possession game. Cook's directing traffic. A little more standing around here for Hofstra. Kramer wide open from three. And that dropped. <laughs> I don't know how. Because he's only a 27% three-point shooter. But look, look, I, I don't want to be the old guy get off my lawn. But if you bank in oh a three-point at top of the key, you don't get to celebrate on the way back. You only get two and a half points, yeah. new NCAA legislation, at the free throw line. There's an offensive rim on your thought, but it's finally in the hands of Hofstra. There's Estrada looking to push pace, and it's an offensive foul. He went against three white shirt defenders, and that was a game he was not going to win. Well, that's Tajay Moore again playing good defense, got all the way down, got his feet set, and drew that charge. Jamal Shedd returns. C.D. Claxton, his first ever game. Could you imagine your first game ever? You're coming from Hempstead, New York, to Houston, Texas, to play a team that played in the Final Four a year ago. Well, last year, they started their season with a ranked opponent yeah. on the road. Scheduling up, I guess. Shed's got it now. That's Cooks in a face guard. Left side. Deep three. Uh-uh. Edwards. Hofstra clears. Cooks will wait for teammates. Now a step back. A launch and a miss. 
Hofstra's cooled off from three in the last five minutes. Yeah, really good defense that time on the ball by Jamal Shedd. Shedd attacks the baseline. Man is open left side. There's a three ball. That's going to drop. Tajay Moore doing it on both ends of the floor. Yeah, and Jamal Shedd doing it on both ends also. Really good defense down here on Cooks. He came down, drove baseline, found Tajay Moore standing out there all by himself. Under four remaining until halftime. Hofstra's led the entire way. On the baseline, wow, crazy shot for Zavario that time. And a foul is going to be called. Is that a... Uh, yeah, that's going to be a, a flop. Yeah, flop. I was going to say, yeah. you don't see that... Very right, 11 of 25 from the floor. Hofstra, 12 of 30. Both teams just 25% from distance, and they've combined to take 28 shots. And Hofstra continuing to win the battle on the boards. Shed attacks down the lane for Cheney. That may have been deflected. Moore back out to Edwards. Screened by Roberts. Tough contested, too. I don't like the angle at all. The putback, I do that one that time as Jay Wan. Wing, the shot went up, and he never got inside the paint. So it's about rebounding effort. You know, the old saying is you don't get 100% of the rebounds you don't go for. Cooks on the toss to Estrada. Caleb Burgess on the starting wings. Jalen Ray, the most recognizable player, has not stepped on the floor tonight for Hofstra. Averaged 19 points per game last year. First team all-conference last year and preseason poll. Burgess, 360 move. Shot clock at four. Deep three, good from Kayvon Kramer. That took 30 seconds off the clock. Good defense, but the open shot, and the Cougars have to pay for it. Lead now back up to six again as the Cougars got it to within one before the technical free throws. Shed gets a screen from Cheney. Lost the dribble. Edwards out near the timeline. Step back. Contested two. Got to take a step back, get a little more freedom. Yeah, no, no white shirt inside of a blue shirt. Cooks, who had those free throws. 19 to shoot. Good defense yeah. by Shed. Absolutely. No separation here. We saw this in the previous trip down the floor. Now you're looking for some dangerous passes. Almost a takeaway that time by Moore. Down the lane, we're going to get a double dribble called against Aaron Estrada. Just stop and keep your balance and see what the defense does. Josh Carlton, again, the Connecticut transfer back on the floor for the Cougars. Sasser is as well. It's a two-possession game under two minutes remaining until halftime. Moore to Sasser right side. Ooh. Whistle away from the basketball. We got work inside. It looks like a tangle up between Josh Carlton and uh, Kayvon Kramer. Josh Carlton. Carlton a 60% free throw shooter at UConn. And unfortunately, really looked like that, but an offensive rebound reestablishes things for the Cougars. That was the exact play. They called the foul on Fabian White reaching over the back. Well, they're looking to find Carlton inside, and they're going to get another Hofstra foul and more free throws here for Josh Carlton. Speedy Claxton's over there with his palms up going, that's not over. That follow through up. I didn't listen to you. Rebound to Dubar. Five-point lead for the Pride as we approach 90 seconds. Burgess out to an open man left corner three ball. That's way hard for Estrada. Sasser will bring it into front court. Off the rebound from Roberts. Right side, it's Moore. Oh, give it to Lob him. inside. Look at that size advantage. Good from the four to the five. And a dunk for Josh Carlton. Yeah, really nice pass by Tajay Moore. He saw the mismatch inside. And Juwan Roberts, nice job demanding the ball. 45 seconds and the crowd being at his lot is still out here at the Procedure Center. Cooks got that shot clock already down to 12. Straight away three, and that'll Ooh. silence the crowd here in Houston. Boy, Cook's put together quite a night. Yeah, he's been really good. 13 points in the first half. Rita, what a one second. Points. Yeah, Ross, one second difference between the game and shot clock. Sasser looks back at his coach, barking out the plays. Hofstra has to feel great. They're going to go to the intermission with the lead. Depends by how much. Down the lane more. Pumps, hands it on the trail, 
Oh, missed the little bunny. Rebound lost. Down to two seconds left. Here comes a half court heave. It is on the way. It's going to hit the rim by Estrada. And that'll end the half. And DJ Moore, who really did some effective work on the defensive side, brings it in bounds here for the Cougars. Open up in man to man. Oh, nice cut to the lane. Missing the shot, however, is Cheney. Loose basketball back corner saved by Amaya Izioka. Ola. A really good set. Cheney went away from the contact. Tried to lob the ball up over the defense instead of crashing through the backboard. Here's Burgess. Well, wide open is Estrada, and he'll nail that, and that's big trouble for the Houston Cougars. A, the shot went down, but B, how wide open he was. You did not see what happened to the defense on the weak side, but boy, the dribble penetration just drew the entire University of Houston team. I think every player collapsed on it. Back to a nine-point lead. With a head of steam, White, too hard. Rebound, Cheney goes up. That's swatted by Isiola. Here we go. In fact, he played 28 games with the Cougars, only made four starts. Off the miss. Rebound out of bounds. Tap is it. We've seen a lot of pick and rolls and get the ball. We haven't seen him get the ball just with his back to the basket very much here in this game. Catch and shoot jumper. No, and a over the back against Houston. Connor Edwards, young man who just took that shot from Arlington, Texas Tech. We talked about him a little bit. When he was good and his finest in Red Raider land, he was putting up five, six, three pointers in a short period of time. There was also times that you didn't see him on the shot column. Two year starter. He had an opportunity to follow Chris Beard to Texas, passed up on that opportunity. And I anticipate he's going to have a really big season for Houston. Playing that third guard in this Houston offense. Ooh, wet spot on the floor. We have a stoppage and play on a foul. Huh. And frankly, relieve some of the scoring burden that I think that probably Sasser's kind of feeling the pressure of at least early on in the season because he is the one that's a returning player. Yeah. We, we have not talked about it, but Tremont Mark is over there on the bench for Houston. Uh, he is nursing a hurt shoulder. They're giving it some rest. Tremont Mark is a scoring machine or penetration that will please Sasser up for more catch and shoot opportunities. On the possession on that held ball, maintained uh, Hofstra a lot with the pride. And uh, Kelvin Sampson is off the bench. Two of the officials are huddling up. Will this be an overturn? Yeah, they can't review it. You saw the international hand sign for review. That's only in the NBA. Oh, well, maybe they are going to go over there and sit, take a look at it. Yeah, that's, it's going to have to be a timing issue because you can't review yeah. who the ball's out of bounds until the last two minutes of the game. So if you go over and you say, hey, look, we're looking at a timing error, right. and then suddenly you see you miss the call, that's that's a tough spot, Reed, because I, I've seen this before in all sorts of basketball. There may be a travel call or a goal tent. All of a sudden, you look in the lower left corner, and there's a clear out by a post player that should have been an yeah. offensive foul. It's it, instant replay has a tremendous benefit, but it also will also open you up to further criticism. Yeah, they, they are not going to review that. That that is not reviewable. So they did not try to cover it with the timing error. And Kelvin Sampson walked all the way out the half court to say, "That's our ball." So the pride will keep it with nine to shoot. Their lead is eight. Moore is going to guard the inbound. Estrada looking for separation. Gets the screen. Ooh. Gives up the open three for a contested two for Dubar. Saved it. New possession. Another missed three. That's two. The player on the floor for Houston right now is Tajay Moore. He is so active down here on the defensive end. It is unbelievable the distance that kid covers. Austin will have to go 93 feet here. And now at midcourt. Here's Cooks. Iziola sets that screen. Another deep three. Burgess. Tap. And finally a rebound into the hands of Cheney. Each of the three three-pointers they've taken in the second half have been well beyond the three-point arc. That's good spacing defensively for the Cougars as Hofstra goes to the zone. I think they're daring for the Cougars to dial up from three. And answering, thank you very much, is Tajay Moore. Five-point game. Burgess in front court for Hofstra. They have led all but 123 in this game. They being Hofstra. Well, look at the top of your screen. The defense being played on courts by Marcus Sasser. Another deep three. Another miss. Dubar fouling backcourt. And right now, 
a Hofstra team that owned the three-point arc in the first half of play cannot find the basket here in the second half. He got three fouls. He's on Fabian wide. Boy, I would sure give him an opportunity to pick up his fourth foul on this possession. I don't think we've even called Fabian's name yet in the offensive strategy. At least here in the uh, first couple of minutes of the second half. Sasser. Oh, Lock Cheney off his right hand. That's the old unforced turnover. He's Yolo with a pickup. Strata. Moving it around. Left side, Kramer. Back out towards midcourt. Savario with a couple of threes in the first half. Looking for another one here. And that one is well beyond the arc. Reggie Chaney, you, you either have to show and help or nod. And, boy, he had two opportunities to help a teammate. And he just stepped back and did nothing. Sasser with a floater to make it 43-37. Cooks met there by Sasser looking for separation. Eziola outside his comfort zone. Silvario would tend to shoot. Pick and pop, 10 footer. No, rattle around that back iron and then fell through. Umbaye Eziola Ezi with the jumper. Easy for me to say. Eight point lead. Sasser to answer back and a foul. Boy, nothing can match a real game. You play an exhibition yep. game, you have the red-white scrimmage, you practice. But, man, when everybody's against you, we're in another uniform. The intensity, especially in these November games, certainly is abundant. Dubar, as they work it around the arc, four minutes gone by in the second half. Seven-point lead. Cooks, who dialed up early for Hofstra's. Ooh, that's a here. moving screen, golly. Estrada. Good defense there by Edwards. Another contested three that time off the hands, and it's no good of Dubar. Dubar's missed two in the three in the second half. And another turnover. This in the open floor for Cooks, and he will use his left hand and score. It's the second turnover by Marcus Sasser throwing one-handed passes. I do not like one-handed passes. One we're way past that point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right now, Zach Cooks and Estrada, boy, they are giving the Cougars all that they could have possibly expected. Here's Edwards with the basketball. Jamal Shed back on the floor for the Cougars. Edwards needs to heat up. Shed's open. This will be a good spot for him to do it. No. Another. Reed, if that starts to fall for him on a regular basis, that is going to yeah. be deadly in the American Conference. So Carlton with that offensive rebound, but could not put it in. The ball deflected out of bounds, and we'll keep it right where we were just moments ago. Hofstra with a 47-38 lead. This. The holidays are coming fast and flurious, which means more reasons for QT, like free gifts. For At Carvana, we treat every customer like your vibe isn't one size fits all. It's about what suits your body. This is a commercial for Warby Parker glasses. Now that's out of the way. Let's enjoy. You're busy. Very extremely busy. Busy dealing with dinner. Busy dealing we're Carvana, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100%. I've been having stomach troubles. It's either yogurt, pork, or citrus. I'm in a work meeting right now, so I don't have time to shop for the perfect avocado. Hinge is the dating app that's designed to be deleted. So, you're busy. Very, extremely busy. Busy dealing with dinner. Busy de Ooh, tortoise. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm taking a quiz. What does it feel like to sell your car to Carvana? It feels amazing. Your vibe isn't one size fits all. It's about what suits your body. Skill, innovation has always powered us. And now skill runs. At skill, innovation has always powered us. And now skill runs. At skill, innovation has always powered us. And now skill runs.
an undefeated season, a conference championship. Cleveland State, Rutgers, Syracuse, Oregon State victories out of the tournament. You get rewarded with a home game, great crowd, Final Four banner raising, and you're down nine to a school that probably 95% of the audience in this building has no idea where it is. Who were picked in their conference in the CAA to finish fifth by the coaches. Now, I'm going to take the over on that. <laughs> this is not the fifth best team in the Colonial Athletic Association. Man, this, this is a good basketball team. Estrada's been impressive. So too is Silverado, who says he has had the basketball with a couple of big threes. So Vario with a dial up and a miss. And saved, thankfully, by Edwards as he's falling out of bounds on the sideline. Shed right of the free throw line. Sasser needs this one. Oh, just the option. Zach Cooks around. And, and he shot a free throw that was short and he looked tired. And well, he was a foot and a half short on that three point field goal attempt. Not grabbing the uh, ball in bounds. And then we've got a foul against the Pride. That'll be the fourth foul against Hofstra. And the whistle on Silverio. Sasser around three defenders. Goes up in all sorts of contact that time. It takes a pretty good spell on the baseline. So if you're Marcus Sasser. And you're and Carlton has been so effective when they've given him the ball down there. Really, the only two big men that Hofstra yeah. had is the one who's been playing. Free throws are made. Crowd trying to be a force here. Cougars, the home team, down seven. Dubar on the handoff to Estrada. Deep three left side, short. Cooks for that effort. Cougars to push. Sasser in particular nails it. And I think what I was talking to you about is in the play. I've got to take over this game right now. Spot on. Cooks in front court with the pride up five. Even the passing lane read is becoming more and more difficult. Shot clock already down to 10. Estrada looking for separation. Dials up. That's short. Offensive rebound again. Down the lane with a step over. Move beautifully done. Darnold Stone Dubar for the deuce. In Kelvin Sampson's world, that's unforgivable. A rebound that bounced off the ground and was picked up at the free throw line. So even though the Cougars trying to get a little crowd involved, basket there. Sasser again attacks. No whistle as he was taken down by Kramer in a hell ball. Yeah, that a was lot a, of contact right there. That was a good no call. Kramer went straight up, got all ball, and uh, well, everybody's going to hold their breath that this isn't anything serious. Looked like uh, Reedy went for his back, and now John Houston, the trainer, is over there visiting with him. I, I, I know I'm saying this over and over again, but I sure give the ball to Josh Carlton. He's in. Right there. Fabian to Carlton. Oh, what a block. Wow. Kramer with those whistles didn't care. He went up and took it away. Well, he's crazy athletic. If you're Carlton, go dunk that ball. There's a poke. Edwards trying to do it on the defensive side of things. Almost forced the turnover. The possession will stay with the pride as Estrada was able to... Uh, not afford himself a turnover there. Shot clock at 20. We are almost seven minutes into the second half. Last three seasons, only one or two teams in the country have been better at home than the Cougars. 44 and three since the opening of the Petita Center. And you think about that, the previous year when they were at TSU's building, they were just about perfect. Well, you know, with, with, with winning comes having a dominant home court, but there's, you know, as you just brought up, this is the most dominant court perhaps in the Southwest when you think about all the schools in the area. And, and take it a step back and, and go up a level for Kelvin Sampson over the last, since 2017, only Gonzaga has had more wins on the Division I level than Kelvin Sampson's Houston Cougars. That is ahead of Kansas, ahead of Virginia, Duke, Michigan State, ahead of Villanova. By far the winningest team in the state of Texas. Estrada faces a double team with 13 to shoot. Long toss out, right side, Silvario. Shot clock at seven. Good defensive switch. Carlton on the kick out left side. Here's Estrada launch with no uh, time remaining on the clock. Oh, and a new 20. Deep three, Silvario nails it. 
Hey. And the frustration continues. 40 seconds of good defense results still in three pride points. Kayvon Kramer has been outstanding. He's the one. He couldn't control the offensive glass, but he poked it out to a teammate. And there's going to be an unforced turnover. And that's just not focusing on time to be vocal and lead your team. And frankly, when you're down double digits with this little time left, relatively speaking, it can't be disaster because they're going to collapse on every time you touch the basketball. Estrada on another cross court. So Barrio, a deep step back, brought rain. Ooh, man. And it dropped. A 7 0 run the last two minutes by the Pride. Largest lead now at 54 42 for Hofstra. Sasser to White against Dubar, about a two inch size advantage. Contested three, drops for Kyler Edwards. Ooh, Fabian White's really fortunate. He palmed that ball. He was going to, he was dribbling, he was going to make a pass. He continued with his dribble, and boy, Speedy Claxton is furious on the bench. Read the Cougars just 5 of 16 now from three point range. Savario back to Cooks. Cooks double team was as soon as touched the basketball, falls down, able to toss it to the left side. Shot attempt coming up, good, another make. Boy, they're answering after every attempt at a Cougar run as Estrada nails another jumper. Yeah, very little bit of it coming out of offensive sets. It's just players turning around, facing up, and going and getting a basket. Sasser, the low block. On the post up, Carlton. Offensive foul. And uh, not <laughs> He's shaking his head, no, 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 no. That was over a palming, he was still arguing, but... He has just got to be thrilled with the way his team has responded. And unknown, nine new players. I mean, it's They have really looked good. Getting from different different parts of the floor, too. And there's going to be a uh, out of bounds. The heels were out. Those uh, to be the head coach. Houston lost an assistant, Alvin Brooks, who's now coaching at his alma mater at Lamar. Another one of those 44. So off the seventh miscue, the Cougars with a chance here. Sasser looking down low again. As they're trying a concerted effort to get Fabian White involved. We saw a little bit of Josh Carlton earlier on. That low block left isolation play. That should be more productive than it has been so far tonight. Well, you, when you run a block play, you need to give them the ball at the block. The last time Josh Carlton came around a back screen, he caught the ball about 25 feet from the basket. Nobody could stop Connor Edwards there. That layup makes it a nine point game at 56-47. Cooks getting teammates involved, not so much scoring as he was in the first half. Savario's been just hitting all over the place. Little separation, tough two ball. And a good reward off the defense. Edwards, he wants back-to-back -back baskets. Not going to happen. Rebound picked up by Kramer. Their post player is in massive foul trouble as we're halfway done in the second half. Savario wants to extend the lead and he will. Omar Savario averaged five points a game. He may have as many points in this game that he had the entire season last year for the Pride. Has made three three-point field goals. 12-point lead for Hofstra. Edwards, way out high this time as you were discussing. White to the lane, floats it. That's all he'll draw is glass. Not the kind of high percentage you want, shot you want, especially as close as he was. Out of control. You can start to see in that bench read the Hofstra Pride can feel this upset ruin. A lot of Estrada faces on the Cougar sideline. Here's Estrada. They're just working clock here. Down to 10 of the shot clock. Silvario to pour salt on the Cougar wounds. Can't do it. That's the kind of Aaron yeah. shot you want him taking. The lead's really, not that big. Really bad shot selection. Got a foul as the ball gets beyond the court. Injury. They're gonna okay. stop the clock and let Kramer go to the bench. Easy Ola will check in with his four fouls. So Kramer's been a good defensive presence in the rebounding side. And Easy Ola comes in. So if you lose Kramer and he can't come back with whatever he's dealing with right now, that is really going to put a small lineup out there where Carlton, you would think, or Cheney or White should really start to dominate. He's walking like that's a cramp. In fact, he's trying to run on the sideline right now, Reed, so that won't be very long, I don't think. Shed left corner. Bounce pass inside. Going up. 
And Fabian White's going to get three throws out of it. Barrio from the Dominican Republic, formerly of Rhode Island. Free throw number two good. And the Pride have their lead dropped to 10 at 59-49. Under eight to go here from the Fortuna Center. Burgess to Cooks. Screen is set. They're just draining clock again for the second straight possession read. They're in no hurry to get their sets going. Instead, a long three coming, and how about that? 30, 20, 25 seconds off the shot clock, and a three ball knocked down by Darwin Stone DeBar. With nothing but positivity right now. Drain clock, and you make the three after your one shot attempt. Cougars down by 13. Shed left corner. Hofstra zoning up. Everything contested to the baseline for a three. That's an air ball. But a putback is there. Good catch and deliverance by Joan Roberts. And Kyler Edwards is saying his shooting arm got hit. Under eight remaining here. Pride have had a double digit lead for much of this second half. Estrada gets a screen. Long two, no. Edwards to push. Gives it to Sasser. Sasser, and the ball deflected out of bounds to the baseline. Ooh, that might have been offset. Have attempted 34 from behind the line. Shed on the inbound. That's White. Plenty of time to shoot here. Sasser looks for the screen and gets it from White to the lane. Yeah. Well, we had a big drum roll. And they unveiled the Final Four banner and a crashing cymbals, and then nah, 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 nah. we approach seven minutes remaining. Cougars down by ten. Burgess correcting traffic. Well, Sasser's defense excellent yeah, there. Yeah, Cannot sure. get inside that arc. Now the double team comes. This is 30 seconds. Oh, and a nice block and a rejection. Here come the Cougars off that defense. It's a three on two. Open man, Sasser, no. Ball loose. Edwards, alley oop, oh, and it hits the rim. They were looking that time for J1 Roberts. Two on one, and the pride can't take advantage of it. Uh, Jamal Shed being really active. Silvario back on the floor for Hofstra. Down to 6.35 remaining. Edwards, left side. White sets that screen for him. Shed in the paint. Out right side, looking for a three. No, Edwards. Another offensive rebound for Fabian. Got a turn, got a twist, and he's going to drop it in for two. Uh, Fabian had a mismatch inside, and rotation Estrada was on him. Good job just turning and going to the boards. You see that clock down to six. Top of the arc, Dubar. To Serraro. Down the lane with the left hand, high arcing shot. That's not going to fall. Zach Cook, super quiet in period number two. And now you've got... Connor Edwards playing with one shoe on. Shoe in his right hand. This will help. Yeah! Marcus Sasser for a three ball. And a timeout of the Pride. That lead. And four whistles apiece. Darlin Sondubar is going to inbound the basketball. Here's Cooks across midcourt. Lattis, we've had it all night here in the Fertitta Center. Shed almost with a steal. So Barrio. Screen is set. Baeziola. They can't get inside that arc, can they? No, they are really frustrated. Now they go attack the lane and miss the shot. Roberts the rebound. Ball in hand for Shed. Can Shed be the lid lifter here? Sasser on a bounce pass. Kicked ball resets. Well, the defense, the last four. And they are out inside the lane. The shot clock showed four seconds. Out of balance with a desperate heave. Speaking of a heave, baseline. Oh, 
around and out for Connor Edwards. Under five, and the Pride with a five-point lead. Estrada checks with Coach Claxton on the bench. Double team comes out left wing. Pass inside. Nobody was there. And that's a layup from the Miami Eziola. That was super easy. Excellent execution that time. That's Speedy Claxton seeing the rotation. He moved hooks to the elbow instead of on the perimeter and totally messed up the defensive rotation. Shed left side. Reach it foul. That'll be a call against Darlingstone to bar. Does it not? That is not where you want your post players catching. Fabian the line. Another crucial miss. Finally secured by Omar Silvario. Free throws will be at practice tomorrow. You can best guarantee that. Estrada, once again, center front court. He faces a constant double team. Shot clock at 12 for Cooks. Back out to Estrada with five. Spins. Shed almost a steal. Floater. Got it! Zach Cooks with his first basket in forever. And a nine-point lead for Hofstra. Boy, that was a dagger by Cooks. Baseline left. Three ball. Yeah! Hit and desperately needed from the Houston Cougars from Atajay Moore, who has been largely quiet in the second half. Two-possession game with three and a half to go. Estrada and Cooks have been back and forth beyond the perimeter. silvario has got a bunch of key threes, looking for one more, and that's an absolute yeah, brick and a big break. Terrible shot. Way outside his range. One shot and out. Two possession game. Sasser wants to keep it that way, and it's been down to four. And Speedy clocks it. Player, you got to fight through it, and it looks like he's going to try to do so. Absolutely. No pressure for Houston defensively as Estrada brings it across midcourt. Under three, and there's a steal. Speaking of all effort, Sasser touch layup. Jamal Shad to make it a two point game. Ninth Hofstra turnover turns out to be a costly one. And Reed, they cannot get inside no, 18 feet. It's like a wall has been built. Dubar tries to break that wall. Oh, good gracious, Cooks with a deep three. Holy cow. I mean, how good has this kid been in this game? Golly. So DeBar the assist, the Cooks triple, 69-64. Sasser trying to do it by himself. Double pumps, lays it off the window for two. Back to a one possession game with under two remaining. Estrada uses the left hand while dribbles to the right to call the play. Silvario, no. Rebound picked up. Jawan Roberts. Sasser, two to a tie, three for the lead. Leans in. Offensive foul, Sasser. 13 feet away from the basket, and Silvario takes it. So that is the 10th Houston turnover. 92 seconds remaining. Boy, there's some hesitation for just even Estrada to get across midcourt. Estrada spending a lot of time looking over that bench. Shooters in the corners. Shot clock at 10. Ball deflected. That's Kramer. Back in the hands of Cooks. With four, with three, going to have to heave it. He's going to throw it right in the hands. Of a Houston defender, J. Juan Roberts. Minute remaining. Cougs down three. Down the lane. Hand it off to Fabian White. And he missed the layup. Ball is loose. Still on the floor. There's a clip and a foul is going to be called on J. Juan Roberts. Silvario had the ball. And had his legs caught underneath. 
A really nice pass by Jamal Shedd. Fabian White was not ready for it. He, the ball came and he almost surprised him. Boy, when you're a big guy and you've got a guard penetrating, put your hands up. Be ready to receive the pass. That was just the fifth foul against the Cougars, so it'll be side out to Hofstra with 47.6 seconds remaining. Cougars, by the way, have two timeouts remaining. Here's Estrada. Gonna let him run the clock down. It's a 20. You see the game clock moving. Estrada to the window. Blocked by White out of bounds. As Reed said, 14 to shoot. They have to go all the way out. Ball stolen by Shed. 29 seconds remaining. Sasser on the kick out. Baseline three. Yes! Triple belongs to Tijon Moore. And we are tied at 69. I think the legs are good. It's the clock, maybe. Now they're going to check and make sure it was a three-pointer and then also check the clock. Yeah, it's hard to imagine the clock got down to 21 seconds. Yeah, oh, that looks way good. Behind. Looks real good. Way behind, but the clock. I got to blame Chris Pesman, athletic director, he because jumped he and jumped up. See. <laughs> I had to watch the ball and uh, couldn't see anything else. So most importantly, that ball went down and. Wow, this is only our third tie in this game. How about the defense? Was that Jamal Shedd that stole the inbound yes, pass? Yes, absolutely, right here yeah, at midcourt. Great job. And I then mean, pushed into front court immediately. Well, the last thing you want to do if you're Hofstra is have the guy inbounding the ball and see it go up like a punt, right? You do not want to inbound the ball with arc. If you're going to do that, you need to throw it all the way down to the other end of the court. What a tremendous defense by the Houston Cougars. Final 10 minutes of this game. The Cougars have scored 22 points, Hofstra 10. And this is where we talked about a minute ago yeah. when Speedy called that last timeout. If there's any sort of problem on the inbound here, you cannot call a timeout because you've got nothing left. Shot clock turned off. 23.3 seconds to go in the game. No pressure for Hofstra to midcourt, it looks like, at least early on. Here's Estrada with 18 seconds remaining. Game clock now down to 10. Estrada still 40 feet away from the basket. With five, with four. Got to put something up. It's a contested three. It's going to be an air ball, and we're going to go to overtime. Oh, my. I think we're going to go to overtime. Yeah, we are. Kyler oh. Edley, no idea what to expect, and they have just played their ever-loving butts off in this game. Eziola and White to the jump circle. On the third try, it belongs to Houston. Shed has been really pivotal off the bench, and we have a whistle, and, and it looks like clock, and the clock is rolling. It's not stopping. It's still going. You cannot, you must stop a clock at some point. Are you hitting me at this point? I don't know. I don't know. 20 to shoot. Sasser, baseline left. Not going to pop it. No. Another Good offensive rebound. rebound. Nicely done, Jaylon Roberts. And Roberts is kind of calm everybody down. You got a fresh yep. clock. Shed. Back out. Now the clock becomes an issue with six. Way contested three. That will count for three. I don't care what you say about a backboard. It's a four-point Houston lead. Yeah, that's karma. <laughs> Kayvon Kramer over there on the bench. Don't you say a word. Two minutes gone by in overtime. Cooks to his left for Estrada. At the top of the key. So Barrio, a deep three. That's a miss at the front rim. And a big time rebound picked up by Tajon Moore. Tajay Moore. And they have taken the shot clock down to seven the last two possessions. 
And I expect the same thing. Shed. Gets a screen from White. Shot clock under 10. We hear the crowd behind us. Moore. The handoff to Roberts. Took 28 off the shot clock. And a two possession lead for Houston. More importantly, 2.06 remaining in this overtime. Dubar in front of his bench. It's been either Estrada, Cooks, or Silverio shoot threes. Ball deflected. How about Tajay Moore? They're going to check it. Uh, you want to talk about high basketball IQ. So last two minutes of overtime or the regulation, if there's a question about the ball ricocheting off of multiple players, that is a reviewable play. Listen, Tajay Moore, well, talk about high basketball IQ. Shot clock down to nothing. Caught the ball outside the three-point line. Put his shoulder down and didn't force up, did not force up a shot. Found a player standing underneath the basket and Tajay Moore was simply an outstanding play at crunch time. So this is an official review, which is a benefit for both teams because they can actually talk it out as they look to see. I'll let you decipher. Here's Estrada. Oh, that's off, off his hip. hip. Yeah, that's off uh, Aaron Estrada's yeah, hip. Yeah, that's off his hip. Uh, that, that should be Houston ball. 154 remaining in the overtime. This will go to the Cougars' way. Now, Speedy Claxton's not going to like this call, but the ball clearly went off of Aaron Estrada's left hip. It will be the 11th Hofstra turnover. L let me qualify that. I say clearly because I got to watch it four times in super slow motion. Well, they're doing the same thing, so, and if they can't figure it out, we'll help them. What was the call? They called Hofstra ball. Right, they did. We're being told from the truck that you bat uh, about 35% correct on uh, on your assessment of officials' I, calls. I, I don't remember any of that. Maybe I'm maybe giving you a little more benefit. I don't remember of the doubt. any specifics. Here we go. Randy Heimerman going to come give us an explanation. Yeah. Can you yeah, show? Can you hip. show that yeah, the same angle the it. officials asking for that same one you just showed us? Yeah, he's going to show us. We're all we're here to help. You know, they're going to look at it right now. We're going to help out our official Randy Heimerman's our crew chief tonight. And they're going to pull the review. They originally. I'm going to resist the temptation to ask Randy if he needs my help with this. How about me holding the monitor for him, too? Here it comes. As you're looking at it, he's looking at it as well. Right hand between the legs. Here comes the defender. There it is. Yeah. Well, you know, one more time, he wants to see it. Fabian White comes out, as you see. That's 35 for the Cougars. Reach, hip, even some elbow read, frankly. Yeah. Okay. Right. So they're going to keep it. Is, yeah, yeah, they're going to let Hofstra keep it. It is not indisputable whether it was the hand or right. the hip that the ball was coming off of. So we don't we don't have that baseline shot. That would have been more definitive, yeah. unfortunately. We don't have it. Has to be indisputable. Right. So I, I, I think this is a situation where if they'd have called Houston's ball, then it would have that, been Houston's yeah, either ball. Either way, it doesn't either return way. the call. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. So what we're really saying is I'm over the season again. Well, when you and I work together, I'll keep our own private listing there. More importantly, we got a basketball game that is to two possession lead for Houston. Silvario going to attack the lane. Tip, no good by Eziola. That's a huge miss with an offensive rebound opportunity. 77-71, six-point lead. Shed between the rings. Your Hofstra has a lot of time left, but Houston has struggled so much at the free throw line. I sure wouldn't give up an easy basket without making somebody go hit a couple of free throws. It would be a one and one here. Sasser, well, comes up well short on that. Eziola, the long outlet pass to Silvario, dials up. Boy, 
I don't a, think that's exactly what was drawn up there. That's about the fourth really, really bad shot that Silvario has taken. He's made some yeah, nice plays, he knows it too. but his shot selection has not been very good. A pair of three pointers as Shed helps the Cougars score seven straight. Yeah, two of two behind the line, and now two of two from the free throw line. A 7 0 run in overtime. Down to a minute remaining. There's a steal. Sasser. And he did the wise thing, Reed. He doesn't need any more points to see the drain clock, and he's fouled. Here comes the second one. Another miss. Garland Stone Dubar the rebound. Still a three possession game. Wow. Take it. To good Sasser. execution. Really good execution. Boy, getting across, draining clock time, and most importantly, sending Kyler Edwards to the free throw line for a double bonus. Now that the floor. Well, that'll be forgotten here in a matter of moments. Yeah, well. Eight point game, 40 seconds. Dialing up a long three ball quickly into front court. That's a miss for Cooks, the rebound to Edwards, and the Cougars are going to win this basketball game. It took probably five minutes longer than they wanted to and 45 minutes of overall frustration as a reach-in foul is going to be called against Zach Collins. Paddling an illness and he and his wife watching this game. So just want to say, Coach Bear, man, there's a lot of us that love you. Get well soon and hope you enjoyed this game. From a 13-point deficit to now a 10-point lead as we're going to see a layup on the way and good for Eziola, the uh, Maui Invitational in Las Vegas. So a good run here for the Cougars, a great non-conference competition. In front court, Edwards has it, and we're under 10 seconds left, and everybody's going to stand up and enjoy a Houston Cougar victory. I don't think Kelvin Sampson, Reed Geddes, is going to be uh, 